Right, now another type of animal, which is chiral, by virtue of its structure, and that's the structure of its house, as a matter of fact, is the snail parchula. Now these are very small, and so I think you're going to have to look on the monitors to see the point that we want to make. But a very interesting point about these snails, and we're most grateful to the London Zoo for bringing Parchula to see us and us to see Parchula. Um, they've been very patiently waiting all day. And these are interesting because we have populations of Parchula, part of which are right-handed, they have right-handed shells, and part of which are left-handed with left-handed shells. And these populations of right and left-handers are genetically separated because they cannot mate. A, a right-hander will not mate with a left-hander. Never the twain shall meet, and so you have a genetically separated population. So in a sense, that's chirality in selective biology. Now, I'm sure you're all a bit disappointed to see such tiny snails from so far away, even with the miracles of television to show them. So we thought, well, we'd have another chiral animal of the same um, group, just, just to let you see what a slightly larger animal is, is like. And here she is. She's a little bit shy, but um, she'll cheer up in just a second. It's moving her, actually, that does it. Now, what about shells? We've talked of Parchula's shell and... Susie, or whatever her name is here, has got a beautiful chiral shell. And that's a left-handed shell. And we've talked about right and left-handed shells, but what about populations of shells like this? Here we have two shells of the group called Busicon. Okay. And you can have a right-handed community. Notice that the opening in which the gastropod lives inside there. That animal looked out from its shell to the right. But we have another one here. It's the same group, Musicon, and notice that its hole is on the left. And this is so rare, only a tiny proportion of shelled animals of this group have got left-handed openings and the full name of that animal is Busicon contrarian. It's contrary to the normal direction of operation. Now you might say, well, all right, this is academic. It's a, academic is used as a rude word these days, and it mustn't be, right? You say, that's all academic, but is that any use to anybody? And the answer to that question is, yes, it's a mighty lot of use, because if you're drilling for oil, you make cores. You put down your drill to the seabed, then what you get is a core. Typically, what, six inches in diameter or so. And that gives you a vertical representation of what the nature of the seabed, or wherever it is, is with time, as a function of time. And you can tell from the content of such cores the history of the Earth as a function of time. That's fine, and that's very important in trying to help you decide whether there's going to be oil in that region or not. And remember, it's no, it's no mean business taking cores of that sort. It's estimated they cost millions of pounds per hole. And so you have to be very careful about what you're doing. And so anything that will help you to increase your chances of getting oil out is going to be attractive. And extraordinarily enough, one of the parameters that you can use is the population of right versus left-handed shells. And we can show you that. In a typical core, we see a population of these shells, these are very, very minute shells. These are tiny. But there is one handedness of shell, and then there is the opposite handedness of shell. And you can tell by the proportion of those 
what was the thermal history of the seabed, and that is one of the parameters which you plug into your equation.